Is this 7 o'clock? Close enough, right? Seven oh one, nice. All right, if I can have everybody's attention, welcome to Wednesday evening worship. Um, so glad to see everybody here. In case you didn't know, they got a big basketball game going on over there against Manning. Um, I was told about it about four times today, so I just want you to know we're covered. Um, I think we'll know, and uh, when there's going to be a game, and I'll make sure that the cones get put up. Everybody, nobody had a problem parking over here, right? Besides Nicole pulling her van behind me. Just so y'all know, I'll throw her under the bus. That's Nicole. All right. Well, welcome to uh, Wednesday evening worship. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to come together, God. We have so many things to be thankful for, but there's still so much, God, that we need to be praying for and about. God, those that are sick, those that are in the hospital, God, I pray that you just heal them. God, give them some peace and comfort. Give him some answers. And so God, just be with us tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so Lottie Moon, we are at 1,800 received. We still need 2,200 to reach our $4,000 goal. So that's where we're at with Lottie Moon. The cards this evening are Mr. Bruce, Margie, Miss Leela, Kathy and Linda, is there anyone else we need to send a card to? She just told me that. All right. Any? All right. How do you spell? Brenda. S N E D D U K E R. Snedeker? Snedeker. I just didn't say it fast enough. I was close enough. All right. Any others? All right, we'll get those passed around. Looks like y'all are first. All right. Well, we have a couple of birthdays today, and I believe one of them is here. We even have anniversary. Um, the other birthday today is Candace Smith. So... Since Joel is here, and it's been a while, and I want to start singing on Wednesday nights, I say that we sing Joel and Candace a happy birthday. All right? And, oh, and I just want to tell you, Charlie can sing. Um, at Miss Betty Ann's uh, birthday party, they, they were looking for somebody to start the singing, and a voice in the corner, I won't say who it was, said, well, Charlie knows how to sing. And so Charlie come up there, and he started off the happy birthday song beautifully. I mean, it it was so majestic that everybody else started late because we were just listening to Charlie sing. All right, so we're going to sing, Joel, happy birthday. All right, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joel. Happy birthday to you. All right. Huh? No, I can't. I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. And then I believe today is Robin and Wade's anniversary as well, right? Okay. Facebook says it was. Jim, any Christmas. Facebook said it was. Oh, gotcha. All right. So just some announcements. We have um, the 19th is a kid's Christmas play in the morning. And then that evening, we will be doing Happy Birthday Jesus down in the Fellowship Hall. And then on the 24th, we will be coming in here. Let me back it up two days. On the 22nd, which is Wednesday, is when the cornbread and soup is going to be for the church. I think I've been saying Sunday. 
Um, but it, cornbread and soup for the whole church. We'll do the devotion and we'll do the eating down there. But the kids would like to uh, feed the church and just have a little bit of time with everybody. So come hungry for some cornbread and soup on Wednesday the 22nd. Then the 24th, we have drop-in communion. It'll be from 5.30 to 6.30 right here. I'll have everything set up, and uh, I'll be waiting to see all of your smiling, beautiful faces. And then the 25th is Christmas, and then we'll be here in church on the 26th, correct? So I can't wait to hear about what Santa brings everybody. Tommy, what'd you ask for this year? <laughs> Fair enough. I, sh I should have known something was coming since I asked. All right, are there any other announcements? So what was handed out to you by Keith was the budget, proposed budget for next year. Uh, so please take that home, read it over, because the vote is next Wednesday, which is our business meeting. So please take a look at that. And if you have any questions, you can hit up uh, Charlie and the finance team, finance committee, as uh, there's quite a few of them on there that you can berate, beat up, whatever you want to do to them. Uh, Keith says he especially likes it when he gets those phone calls. Yeah, <laughs> see? All right. So please take a look at those and be ready to discuss and vote uh, next Wednesday. So tonight I would like to turn our attention to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And you know, Luke is the only gospel that goes through the full birth of Jesus Christ. It gives a little bit of in-depth um, look into what happened and how it happened. You got Mark who jumped straight to his adulthood. Mark doesn't mess around, right? Mark is all action. Mark goes from zero to 100 throughout his whole book. That's, that's Mark. Mark is about action. Uh, Matthew's genealogy. Matthew's got all the genealogy, tells you how we got from uh, all the way back from Adam and Eve to, to Jesus. And then John is just about how God, it, or Jesus was the word that God spoke that created humanity. And so that's kind of where John's focus. Well, Luke actually took some time and Luke wrote out the, the birth of Jesus Christ. He also wrote out the birth of John the Baptist. But where I would like to, to look today, we're not going to go into the Christmas story, but I would like to look at Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8. Starting in verse 8. So where we find ourselves is Jesus has been born, right? Now, I want to I ask you, because I think everyone in here, with the exception of a, one or two, you know, could you imagine women being pregnant and being on a donkey and traveling somewhere? I mean, could you imagine? And men, I don't know about you, but when my wife calls me, I'm pretty cool and calm and collective in, in emergency settings. I mean, the, the military trained me to be that way. But as soon as I got to call that my wife was in labor or my wife was giving birth, I lost all sense of, I don't know, um, competence. <laughs> you know, I, I darn near run into everybody. I wasn't looking. I was focused on getting to the hospital. But I couldn't imagine being Joseph and Mary on that journey into Jerusalem. I mean, could, could you imagine having to, having to ride the back of that donkey? I just remember Felicia hollering at me because during the uh, birth of Connor, who I got to deliver, which was pretty cool, but during her labor with Connor, I was watching a TV that they had in the room. I was laughing too loud, and she was in pain. So I quickly learned to turn that TV off and uh, focus on her. So, uh, But could you imagine, right? So uh, Mary and Joseph make it. But there's no place for him. We know that. Jesus is born. So what we're going to pick up is the shepherd and the angels. And it says in verse 8, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the, peop all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in a swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace amongst those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So there's... There's a few things that I, I thought was pretty pretty neat, pretty unique about this little 
part of the story of Jesus' birth. Why didn't the angel go to the religious leaders? Why didn't the angel go to the rich? Because you know what shepherds were, right? They're, they're what we would call blue collar. And oh, by the way, these shepherds were not at home sipping on some hot cocoa or drinking some hot tea or whatever they did back in that day. They, they were out in the field working. They were out in the field working. And so an angel, the angel picked them of all people. Why? What does Jesus say throughout his time, here, time on earth? It's all about the lowly, the oppressed, right? So it only makes sense that the angel goes to, to three um, blue-collar workers that are out in the field working to proclaim the gospel. And that's what he's doing. The, the Greek word is evangelos, and it just means good news. Um, I won't go, yeah, it just means good news. So he goes out there to tell them this good news. And he picks these three workers who are out in the field working. He didn't go to a king. He didn't go to a queen. He went to three lowly workers. And then not only does this angel go to these lowly workers, but what happens? And suddenly there with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying. So it wasn't only an angel, but then he was surrounded, right? The angel was surrounded. All of a sudden there was this heavenly host and they were singing and praising God. They were having worship out with these shepherds. Now when these shepherds started out, do you think that they at any point thought that there would be an angel or that they would end up at a worship service about Jesus being born? Of course not, right? But here they are. And, and, and another thing that, that I notice is he says, do not be afraid or fear not. And a lot of times you read the Bible, whenever there was a heavenly host, whenever there was an angel or anything like that that would come down, that's the first thing that they would say. Because they feared, they revered God and the angels. It was not something that they took lightly. Having that relationship or being thought enough of to have them come down from heaven to talk to him. So the angel tells him, fear not. And so then the multitude comes and they're singing and they're talking about glory and uh, glory to God in the highest. And then uh, they go, when the angels went away from them into the heavens, uh, into the heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So not only did the angel come to these three workers not only did they have a worship service but then after they were told the good news they were spurred to what action they wanted to go and see jesus they wanted to go and see what the angel was talking about you know what i remember when i was a kid growing up in church and you'd have certain preachers that you, you really like and, and when they would talk man you're ready to just take that that hill you're ready to charge that machine gun nest. You would do whatever they told you to do, right? When, that's what these men uh, were like. When the, when the angel took the time to come to them, they were like, we're going to go and see exactly what he's talking about. They were spurred to action from the good news. And so we're gonna, I'm going to continue reading. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, verse six, uh, yeah, 16. Ooh, my eyes. And the baby lying in the manger, and when they saw it, they made knowing the saying that had been told them concerning the ch this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So... Real briefly, it's Wednesday night. We'll get out of here in about an hour. But there's some things that happen to these shepherds. There's some things that happen to these shepherds, right? They have a personal experience with a heavenly being. They have a personal experience with an angel. And they knew that it was a heavenly being because they were afraid. The heavenly being had to tell them, hey, don't be afraid. And then could you, I, I mean, I, I get the worship part, but I couldn't imagine I'm standing there all of a sudden, how many of y'all in here have seen Beetlejuice? All right. So when it talks about the heavenly beings coming around, I, I imagine the end when all those ghosts are singing. But it, could you imagine standing there and all of a sudden there's all these 
beings singing and praising and worshiping. Right? So not only were they afraid, but there was a lot thrown at them. But because of this interaction with this angel, they took action. They were spurred to take action. They were spurred to go see what this angel was talking about. As a matter of fact, the angel didn't just say, hey, Jesus has been born in Bethlehem and leave. He said, you'll see him swaddled in a manger. That was, he, he gave them the exact, uh, uh, how they could uh, identify Jesus in the manger. So because of this, this, um, this uh, interaction with this angel, they were spurred to action. Then they go, and they go quickly. You notice they didn't just meander. Right? See, when, when God puts a calling on your life or when God tells us to do something, he wants it done now. Right? He doesn't want us to hem and haul. He is a God of action. Right? Not a God of inaction. But they go hastily to go see Jesus. And then when they see Jesus, their lives are changed. What are they doing when they leave there? Are they high-fiving and saying, well, that was cool. We got to see Jesus. We were one of the first ones to see baby Jesus, the baby Messiah. We are the first ones. No, they left there singing and praising and worshiping the fact that they got to see the Messiah. Their lives were changed. I don't know about you, but this also speaks to me that, that God moves when he wants to move, not when we want him to. Because then another thought I have is, what happened to the, the things they were shepherding? Where did they go? There was three of them. The three of them decided to leave or go see Jesus after the encounter with the angel. Who stayed with whatever, the sheep or whatever they were shepherding? So it, it changed. Or, or, or God moves when he wants to move, not when we want him to move. Because they were working. They were out doing their thing. And so when, when God comes to us, when we have that interaction, and it always seems like this time of year, I think it's because of Jesus' birth and Christmas and everybody's happy and giddy and, you know, we're all like school kids waking up in the morning to see our presents. We seem to, to, to be more in tune with what God wants. We seem to be more in tune with God, and maybe it's because we, we're happy. We're not thinking of the Eeyore moments, and we're not thinking about all the bad stuff that's going on around us. But it's important that during this time when God is speaking to us that we listen. It's important that when God wants us to worship, we worship. It, you, it could be you driving in your car. It could be you at your work. It could be you at your house. It could be right here in the church service whether it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. But when God wants to worship with you, when God wants you to praise over something, do it. And then don't forget the joy that these fellows had, these three uh, shepherds had at seeing baby Jesus. He hadn't even died yet. He hadn't even died yet. And they still left that manger changed. How much more change should we be knowing that he died on the cross for our sins? He's not that little baby in that manger anymore. He has become the ultimate sacrifice. He has been the ultimate sacrifice. He conquered death. So any interactions that we have with God, any interactions that we have with Jesus Christ, if the baby can move those three workers as much as he did, he can move us a whole lot more. Because of what he's done. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this wonderful evening. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your son. Thank you for just this time of year, God. There's just something about the lights, the, the family, the togetherness. God, there are people that are out there hurting, and we know that, and we pray for them. God, as I heard it said this morning as I was listening, to a podcast, and somebody brought up the fact that while we're celebrating and worshiping, there or celebrating, there's some people that are uh, having to spend their first holiday without their parents because of COVID. And so God, help us keep that in mind and help us to be there for those folks 
that are dealing with that loss during this most happiest of times. So God, be with us the rest of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, just so everybody knows, Margie was rushed back to the hospital um, two days ago. Mary kept calling me. I guess my phone was on silent or I had already blocked her number. I don't know which. But uh, Mary let me know what was going on. I called Chris. She started uh, puking up blood again uh, after being home. Uh, so they, they ran her through an ambulance because the home health was coming. She refused to go. Margie is probably the toughest individual I have ever met. I will just tell you that. Because her ordeal started at 3 in the morning, and these uh, home health folks don't come to like 8 or 9. Well, and once they showed up, they got an ambulance. While she was on her way, the systolic and diastolic blood pressures were close, which according to Chris doesn't mean that she was having a heart attack, but that one could have been happening or one was coming soon. Um, once they got her there, they were going to take her to the cath lab. The doctor decided, nope. Uh, the ER doc, the attending physician, decided we're going to run some tests. We're going to figure out what's going on. Well, the blood pressure, they couldn't get right. And so they put her on blood pressure medication, and every time they take her off, it would plummet back down. So they did an uh, endoscopy yesterday, if I said that right, and they found some areas that were bleeding, and so they went ahead and cauterized those. Um, so she's, she's healing in the hospital now, so please keep her in your prayers. And then I found out that Mr. Bruce keeps falling. So pray for him. Um, Anna sent me a text and thought that he had rebroke his arm because of his falls. But he had not, it just hadn't healed yet completely. So please pray for Bruce and Margie uh, and the family during this time. And, if, you know, Anna, I was talking to her today, and she's in Sumter with Bruce at the hospital. But the good thing is they got to go swing in and see Margie. So, actually, no, never mind. They did go see Margie, though, but uh, good night. But, yeah, so she was in Sumter. I said, is there anything I can do for you? She said, just commit me now. So I told her, not a problem. I know a couple places. But uh, no, she says she appreciates the prayers, and uh, please keep them coming. Um, you all have the same list that I do. Uh, are there any other ones? Cecilia broke her arm, her shoulder, you said, right? Shoulder. Travis is healing nicely, but he's still got a ways to go. Pray for Sydney. I was talking to her Sunday night. She has a big test coming up uh, tomorrow, and she has to score a pretty high, I believe it's an 82, um, to pass this class. And if she doesn't pass the class, then she's got to wait five years. So pray for her, because she's been going through a lot in this class, and this teacher's been trying to help her. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So just uh, pray for Sydney as she's taking this test tomorrow. Um, it's OB, so those of you that are nurses or biology gurus, you know all about OG, uh, OB and how, how uh, fun it can be. Pray for Carol. Pray for Freddie. He walked up to me Sunday morning. I was standing back there and he pulled his leg up. It looked like he had plastic on his foot. And then he had a shoe on with his foot with the plastic in the shoe and then that and a boot. I said, what's going on? And he said it was gout. So, but just pray for him that he doesn't turn into ulcers, more ulcers on his feet. But pray for uh, Freddie as well. Any others? Huh? Francis McKenzie? Family of Jewel Floyd. All right. Any others? All right. I know we got some praises. Yes. I thank the Lord for allowing you to be here. 
That's my phrase. Any others? <laughs> Amen. I mean, yeah, I was going to ask you, what's going on with your neck? Before they look at it, or that's when they're going to do the surgery? All right. All right. Pray for you. Well, this is the whole reason she got that pig valve was so she could have a kid because she got that metal one. She wouldn't be able to have kids. So. Pray that everything goes smooth because I saw a bunch of stuff. I guess she was going into early labor. Oof. Any others? Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. Charlie, you mind closing us out in prayer?